The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everyone here live in Atlanta for the OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Stu Miniman, analyst at Wikibon.org. Our next guest, CUBE alumni, CEO of SolidFire, Dave Wright. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Good to see you. I did a keynote this morning. How do you feel? I feel great. <laughs> you guys had a lot of customer <laughs> testimonials up there, really kind of introducing a lot of stuff. Quickly, just give us an update on what, a review and an update on what you presented this morning. Yeah, so you know, this morning we were really talking about how OpenStack has uh, really emerged as um, almost this operating system for the next generation data center, as the way that people are able to orchestrate um, all of their pools of compute, networking, and storage through a software layer, move away from the siloed infrastructure of the old data center. Um, and as people are trying to do this, um, you know, they're looking for ways to get started. They're looking for ways to accelerate that process. Uh, and so we announced SolidFire AI. It's a SolidFire Agile infrastructure. It's a uh, reference architecture-based converged infrastructure for OpenStack-based uh, clouds that uses uh, Dell hardware, SolidFire so uh, software storage. that's SSDs, side. right? Yeah, all flash storage all flash. Uh, with it. Uh, and then Red Hat OpenStack. So on the, tr on the um, quote you had, um, you said you're going to break down the data silos and move to scale out databases. Uh, were you referring to transactional data there primarily? Well, I mean, I think we're clearly seeing on the database side of things the shift from, uh, in many cases, relational databases to uh, big data data processing workloads to NoSQL databases. Um, but the bottom line is, even if you're still in the relational world, uh, people are having an explosion of these relational databases to manage. And the old approach of, I've got a new database, I need to get a new storage system, is clearly not going to fly in the software-defined data center. Yeah, so Dave, if we could talk a little bit about active infrastructure. So in your keynote, you laid out that converged infrastructure is all about simplicity. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the challenges with OpenStack today is I, I don't think simple has come up you know, when, when, when people have been describing it. Um, can you talk a little bit about you know, how, how those mesh together, your, your reference converged architecture sure. and, and OpenStack? Yeah, I mean, OpenStack has definitely gotten simpler as it's matured. Um, <clears throat> the uh, installation, the setup process, the guides that are out there you know, make it a lot easier. Uh, but what's really been missing is something that puts all of the pieces together, the hardware and the software pieces, the best practices around deployment, the best practices around scaling, to allow uh, particularly enterprises who are trying to get started with OpenStack uh, to have a solution to start with, something that they know is going to work out of the box. Yeah. So as far as I know, I, I think you have the first you know, reference architecture that, that takes care of all the infrastructure with uh, the, the distribution. Um, it, 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 do you think that's true? Or? Yeah, I think we certainly have the first um, kind of um, community-based solution, one that you know, takes a best-of-breed multi-vendor approach that doesn't try to deliver all of you know, the hardware and software through one uh, kind of vendor's viewpoint. Uh, and I think that's one of the strengths of the solution is that it is uh, bringing in the best of breed from the community. Okay, so you know, uh, I, I know from your hardware standpoint, you guys have a long relationship with Dell. So you mm -hmm. know, I understand if, you, if you're looking for kind of a you know brand name server that that makes a lot of sense. Can you talk to us a little bit about the decision process? How did you know Red Hat end yeah. up as the distribution of choice? Well, you know, first on the Dell side of things, obviously Dell's made a huge uh, investment in OpenStack. They're very very committed to it. Um, they make great great servers. They make great networking. Um, but but they are really committed to being part of that ecosystem, and, and that's uh, something we really support. Um, you know, Red Hat obviously is a longtime leader in the open source community, in the Linux community, uh, and they've really shown that leadership uh, on the OpenStack side as, as well. Um, they were a little bit later to the party than some, but they have come at it with tremendous resources on both the engineering side as well as the go-to-market side. They've already uh, entered into a strong alliance with Dell, so it's a, it's a natural union for our first agile infrastructure. Great. Dave, what's your use cases for your customers that you guys are seeing in your, in your traction right now in the product market fit? Is it transactional? Mm -hmm. Because I'm just thinking about big data as a huge, 80% of the, the landfill of big data is, is not necessarily IOPS sensitive, if you will. So sure. you guys are more IOPS focused with SSD. Do you see that in your primary use case, or are you actually doing big data in SSD? 
Uh, you know, we do, a, we do a mix of workloads, and that's actually really the strength and where we see SolidFire being deployed most is places where you have uh, infrastructure as a service, whether it's in a public cloud or a private cloud type environment, you want to run a range of workloads, right? You want to run Hadoop, but you also want to run Cassandra, but you also want to run uh, MongoDB, and by the way, you still have a lot of MySQL and maybe some Oracle and SQL Server in there as well. And you can take the approach of trying to build a storage environment for each of those, and maybe you end up with one thing for Hadoop, another thing for MongoDB, and another thing for Oracle and SQL Server, but that's not manageable at scale, and it doesn't give you the agility that you need as your developers, as your administrators, as your businesses are trying to move faster. And the, the promise of SolidFire is to give a platform that has a tremendous amount of performance, but is also very, very cost effective on a CapEx basis, very, very cost effective from an operational basis, but has the scale out capabilities, the quality of service abilities to give each application exactly what it needs. If it needs a lot of capacity and a little bit of performance, we can give it that. If it needs a lot of performance and a little bit of capacity, you can give it that and you can run all of those workloads in a single infrastructure as opposed to having to deploy islands of storage for each application. So you guys have an advantage on throughput and cost per gigabyte. Is that? Well, we do, I mean it, it has, you know, just from a raw numbers perspective, it's got a, uh, our, our systems have tremendous amount of IOPS, tremendous amount of throughput, uh, very, very, um, capacity efficient with our inline deduplication, compression, thin provisioning, um, but it's really the software on top that delivers guaranteed quality of service. The ability to provision performance separate from capacity, the ability to give each application the performance profile that it needs, and then adjust that over time if needed, um, that really allows us to run all of these workloads and not just be tied to a single use case. Where are you guys seeing the success for you guys? Who are you, uh, whose lunch are you starting to nibble away at uh, in terms of uh, traction in the market, is it, is it EMC, is it, uh, you compete with Pure and these guys, what, what's, what do you guys fit in there? Yeah, so most of our, uh, most of the business that we do is in the infrastructure space. So we work with service providers and large uh, enterprises that are building out their next generation data center infrastructures and it could be um, OpenStack based. We do a lot of business with VMware, we do a lot of business with CloudStack as well. So all the infrastructure platforms with SolidFire underneath and you know, in many cases we are displacing existing legacy storage systems, uh, EMC or NetApp or, or something like that. In other cases, these are kind of greenfield opportunities and people want to take a best of breed approach to their next generation data center. They're looking for storage that um, really is a more modern architecture that is designed for multi-tenancy, designed for scale out, designed for quality of service. Yeah, so Dave, SolidFire started really heavily focused on the service provider market. Mm -hmm. Since then you've moved into the enterprise space. Give, give us what you're hearing in the marketplace for OpenStack, you know, service providers versus enterprise. Sure. Where do you see that going? And uh, you know, I guess the follow up for that is, you know, did this move to OpenStack? Was that, that a pull for the customers or, or are you moving ahead of the market? Yeah, so, you know, we invested very heavily in the service provider space initially because it was obvious where, that that's where a lot of these next generation data center technologies were being deployed first. The competition factor of the public cloud, of Amazon in the marketplace, pushing these service providers and the pull that they were having from their customers to deploy infrastructure as a service platform as a service type offerings was going to push them to move faster into the next generation data center. Um, but now we're seeing the enterprise is a fast follower on to that because they're now trying to get that agility, that efficiency, that speed that everybody's been talking about in this in this conference. They're trying to get that in their own data centers. And for us, OpenStack was something where we were we were pretty far ahead of the game. We we've been investing in OpenStack for about two and a half years now, really before uh, just about anybody had production deployments of it. But it was very clear that something like OpenStack was going to be necessary. We were going to need a um, vendor neutral community-based open source platform for next generation data centers. It's not that there wouldn't be other options and there wouldn't be proprietary vendors that were coming in there as well, but the pull um, of open source was clearly going to create a vacuum that, that was going to create an opportunity like this. And you know, we didn't know at the time if OpenStack was going to be successful or not, but we saw it as a, as a great um, starting point, a great community, a great organization, something we wanted to contribute to, and clearly it has become wildly successful. Dave, talk about OpenStack for the folks at home watching that might not be in the inside baseball as it's evolved. Where is it today? Give them a quick update from your personal perspective. You've been close to it. Obviously, you've worked at Rackspace, so you mm -hmm. know what they had to do to kind of get into the cloud business. You helped build that out, and now you're participating in the ecosystem uh, as, as, a, as a CEO and founder of the company. But people are trying to figure out how real it is. Obviously, it's, it's happening. People are certainly interested in Act House. Um, but where, what's the state of the, of the OpenStack Summit here? You know, I think um, it's very clear. OpenStack is now in its ninth release. Um, it, has released, it has reached a level of maturity that a lot of uh, commercial software, frankly, never gets to. And it is absolutely production ready. And we've heard example after example after example of customers that are running it at large scale. 
in production today. Um, at the same time, the, the breadth of the project has grown tremendously. Um, it's gone far beyond basic compute networking and storage into a number of other platform technologies that have been rolled into it as well. Um, and so, you know, with that has come some complexity. Um, so it's, it's easier than ever to get started, but now there's this very rich ecosystem of open source projects, of commercial vendors, of other pieces uh, that people need to consider. And so uh, it can be fairly intimidating uh, to, to get started. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to start with Agile Infrastructure with something that was just a, a very kind of simple, clean, uh, standards-based approach to OpenStack, but one that people could build on. They could then integrate other projects, other technologies, other vendors into that solution over time. So, Dave, uh, SolidFire was heavily involved in the creation of Cinder. Can, mm -hmm. can you give us the update? You know, what are you seeing in the community? You know, who's who's really helping build that? You know, where's their uh, kind of the innovation that's going to happen going forward? Because it, it seems from some of the projects are a little bit more unstable. Cinder seems it seems pretty sure. solid, and we're hearing a lot of announcements from from different vendors. So, give give us the Cinder update if you could. Yeah. So we um, early on realized that block storage was something that uh, was going to be important enough that it needed to be broken out and managed as its own project. We helped. Uh, orchestrate the kind of breakout of Cinder from Nova uh, and have contributed you know, very heavily to that project, maturing it uh, over time into something that is a very robust software-defined storage management platform uh, and one that is vendor neutral that other vendors can plug into and there are dozens of plugins now for Cinder today and um, many of those vendors contribute to the core project and we're also finding that uh, many of the SolidFire customers who are using SolidFire with Cinder have actually started contributing to the project. So customers like iWeb and eBay uh, are actually contributing to the development of Cinder. Uh, and there's you know, really great capabilities uh, in there in each release. Um, integrated backup restore, uh, new snapshot capabilities, um, remote replication, uh, a number of other things that it is enabling uh, and that the vendors can completely tie into and leverage their own kind of storage architectures to optimize around. So Dave, I want to ask you about the update in the company. How many employees do you have now? What's the level of funding? You going for another round? Acquisition talks? I mean, obviously, Pure Storage has, has certainly had a huge funding round. That kind of in the all flash market in the EMC mm -hmm. world had a huge event around flash. What's, this, what's the update on SolidFire? Give us a quick update. Yeah, so we're, we're growing really fast. We grew 700% uh, last year. Our, uh, our kind of uh, employees, we're, we're now over 230 employees in the company. Um, we've raised 68 million in funding and, and probably will raise more in the future. Um, but we're also taking a very pragmatic approach to the market. Uh, again, we are not, um, we are not a flash band-aid approach. Um, we're not out just to solve performance problems. There's a lot of people that have performance problems and, and they're looking to flash as a solution for that. And, and flash is a good solution for that. Um, but there's bigger problems that people are dealing with. And these bigger problems around agility, around efficiency, um, around scaling their infrastructures, uh, those are really the things that SolidFire is tapping into and that we're really uniquely positioned to deliver on among both the flash vendors as well as the traditional display systems. What's, uh, final question, share with you in your own words, what's going on in the show here? What's, what's so important about this year uh, more than any in this industry? Yeah, you know, I really think this is, um, this year is a huge turning point for OpenStack. It has uh, reached a, a kind of breakaway velocity where it's clear that, that nobody's going to put this uh, you know, back in a, in a can. This is something that is going to be part of our industry for a long, long time to come. And everybody's going to have to deal with it. Service providers going to have to deal with it. Amazon's going to have to deal with it. Uh, enterprises are going to have to figure it out. Um, every vendor has to figure out their role to play in the ecosystem. Uh, and this summit, the developers coming together, the ecosystem partners coming together, the customers coming together to figure out what that world is going to look like has been, has been exciting. Um, but it's now something, and it's clearly one of the most talked about technologies in the IT space for a very good reason. Dave, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Congratulations. It's has been following you guys and get to know your team. Uh, Fun to, uh, fun to see you guys again uh, here at OpenStack, and we'll see you around. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.